It was a few days after the flower festival and we were at the mall. John asked me to hang out with him and when I accepted he he immediately came here. It was a little confusing to me. We were talking to each other more than usual, hanging out with each other all the time but I didn't know whether to consider the flower festival as our first date. I wasn't sure whether he had feelings for me either. Can't believe it, it's already happening, we're on our way. And I had and I had feelings for him, but what were they? It was all too confusing, so I almost preferred the general silence on that subject right now. Right now, hanging out with each other was fun. I didn't want to think about it any harder than that. Or harder than that. We were window shopping and chatting with each other, but of course, when John saw the birdhouse in the shop window, he stopped. Now, nothing I did would make him budge. Well, I do like the colours. It is a home fit for a king. It is heaven. It is the seventh kingdom. Buy it for me. I glance at the price tag and gasp. Uh, maybe not. Let's, uh, Jacques. You like ice cream, don't you? I enjoy it in theory as every other semi-sentient human being does. But you know what I would enjoy? Not in theory that birdhouse. John snaps his fingers. He makes a compelling case. All right, buddy. If it's for you, it's worth it. I don't know if John likes us. Finally, you see who wears the pants in this relationship. And as pants are fundamentally worse than wearing dresses or going naked, we know who is superior here. <sighs> I eyed Jacques wearily but John simply laughed what a card right Hannah right John went inside to buy the birdhouse I stayed behind in the main center of the mall watching a mother and her three-year-old son walking past part of the reason I didn't want to go in because was because everything in that shop was so damn expensive the very thought of walking around in there sent shivers up my spine one wrong move and it would it'll be back to Amaris ugh his name Amaririsu for me <laughs> but the other reason was that I needed some time away from Jacques my feelings on him were mixed admittedly it was hard for me to hang around him so much it was clear that John wasn't going to part with him though oh yeah so I tried to suck it up it was clear that Jacques was a well-behaved bird robot one who is not at all inclined to talent based murder on a on a whim <laughs> But every now and then, he'd flutter his wings or turn to preen himself and adrenaline shot through my body. I was constantly on edge and it was so, and it was nice to have a break, even if it was only temporary. If you're gonna hang, if you're gonna like date John, I think it's, you're gonna have to deal with this. Awkward. <laughs> John emerged from the shop, a large cardboard box under one arm. Sweet, I got it. Ready to head back? Uh, already, but we just got here. Oh, we did, didn't we? It would be hard to like this thing all over the mall, though. What a- he's such a terrible date. John made a face at me and I sighed. <sighs> okay, let's go back. Sweet! Thanks, Hannah. What a spoiled guy. A few days later, I was sitting in John's dorm room, wielding a heavy hammer. I wonder what, he, what it- I wonder what it would have been like to date PBG. I feel he would have been a nicer voice. I don't know. Nah, I've come this far. John poked his head over the instruction manual, examining the different planks of wood in front of it, in front of us. I had no idea how this was supposed to become a birdhouse, but John was determined to see it through. Nail this in here. <laughs> John pointed to a dot in the orange wood, and I lifted a nail over the spot. Here. Yep, there. Uh, are you sure? Yes, it'll be this eye. Hammer it in. I scrunched my eyes shut and lifted the hammer. Whoa, 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 whoa. What on earth are you doing? I froze, staring at him. Hammering the wood? Hammering your fist, more like. I'm better at pottery wheels. Wait, is she into pot? Oh, yeah, because it's her, her dad. Give me that. John yanked the hammer from my hand, shaking his head. 
kill kill me like a maniac. I swear. What? Uh. <laughs> but he was smiling even as he puffed. Puff, puff, puff. Day faded to night as we worked on the little birdhouse, fielding some harsh words from other boys on the floor and mishaps involving incorrectly attached spokes. Finally, John screwed in a peg on the front of the house and sat back on his heels. We did it. It's done. It is! <laughs> a tiny orange birdhouse with a dirty red roof stood proudly in front of us, about as tall as my arm. It looked bigger on the box, but maybe this is better? John stood the birdhouse on the edge of his desk and smiled. Now Jacques has a place to stay when he pretends to sleep. When he pretends to sleep? <laughs> well, he's got to recharge, but I have to plug him in and, and watch him for that to happen. Otherwise his battery could overload and he'll literally explode. He can explode? He's got this self-destruct mechanism too, but don't worry. Uh, only I know what phrase triggers that. Was. Is that really a good thing? So now that we're done, do you want to take a break and play some games or something? Oh, that sounds really nice. Do you mind if we do a puzzle game? I want to practice for the tournament. So John's face darkened as soon as I said the word puzzle. And I stopped in my tracks. Puzzle. My old nemesis. He stroked his beard. Then turned to stare solemnly, solemnly out the window. I timidly approached him. His hands pressed rapidly, pressed my rapidly beating heart. Ooh, you know what's the front of the heart? Boobs. Uh, what happened between you and puzzles so many years ago? I flushed. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't what I wanted to happen. I'll tell you that. John leaned in, an arm over the window, then heaved a heavy sigh. I love puzzles. They were good to me. Oh, or something. They were symbiotic. But then, he shuddered. They destroyed me. I was stuck in a puzzle. A puzzle witnessed several times before, but was never able, but was never able to solve. I spent hours, hours poring over this puzzle. Days even. Finally, I decided to take a break. What can take my mind off this, I asked myself. Unsurprisingly, I knew the answer. A new puzzle. A new challenge. Something grounded in reality. I would solve a thousand piece puzzle. But John. I know, I should have known better. I should have been more careful. He clenched his fist, then hit his face. <laughs> After a few seconds, he collected himself and resumed. I shook the pieces out of the box and set to work. Oh, shut up. And set to work, but both games were salty. In hindsight, I should have known better than to puzzle in front of another puzzle. So, what happened in the end? I, I, I laid a gentle hand on John's shoulder. He nodded at me, gathering strength from my touch. I finished a thousand piece puzzle, all except one piece. No! That piece. That piece went missing. No! I found that piece underneath the very puzzle I was solving. <laughs> yes! Yes! That is as it happened. John put his face on his hands. When I returned, I shattered mess to my beloved computer puzzles. I discovered my safe is wiped out as well. <laughs> I knew then what happened. The puzzle gods were angry at me. No, they are angry with me. And that's why I can't go near them. He turned slowly towards me, staring at me with eyes of blaze. I don't know what that is. <laughs> this is why, now that is why you are here. Me? Yes, you. You. Anna. <laughs> you are our only hope. John took my hand in his, leaning towards me. His brown eyes got bigger and bigger. And what pretty eyelashes he had. Ooh. Ooh.
It is nice to say that it was for Bye. Ah, <laughs> the worst. <laughs> the sinner messes up her okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he stepped away from the window and from me, returning to our rugged red house. Anyways, I've got some work to do now, so I'll see you later. Summer, summerly dismissed and not entirely sure what just happened, I gathered my things. Don was inspecting his planner. Frustration etched on his face. Well, the blue tubes over here. <laughs> alright, alright. Thanks. Thanks anyways, John. John glanced at me and seeing the sad look on my face frowned. No. Thank you. I really enjoyed myself. This was fun. We should hang out more often. I'm not satisfied with seeing you alone. Seeing you alone only every couple of days. <laughs> that would be nice. It's such a shame you're not interested in enjoying the play. I'd get to see you all the time. Then I swear. And I swear you're just right for the trip. Shut up about that freaking tree. He shook his head sadly. Anyways, he's seeing you. The more time I spent with John, the more attractive the prospect of joining the play became. Of course, being a tree was not something I would ever be proud to admit to. I certainly wouldn't be riding home to tell my dad about it, but if I could see John every day, it might just be worth it. John and I tried to spend more time together over the next week, but it proved to be rather difficult. Between John's play practice, our homework, PB. PB and J, normal boots club meetings and practicing for the tournament, there was hardly any time which we could see each other. Man, it really escalated. Hmm. Even when we did, we were almost never alone. Maya was in my room, PBG and his, students wandering the fields and hallways. With well, all the time I wasn't speeding with John, I started to reconsider his proposal. As insulting as his as was his belief that I would sincerely make the best tree this side of the Pacific, I had no uh, I had no doubt. He sincerely meant it as a compliment. John was prone to putting his foot in his mouth and he was blunt and straightforward and usually said exactly what he meant, even if that was the most tact if that wasn't the most tactful thing or even what his true feelings on the situation were. Besides, if you look at it in a different way, being a tree was really a special kind of talent. One had to remain still and completely and totally lack presence. Apparently ninjas trained hard to develop this kind of ability, and here I had it naturally. Sure, pretending to be a tree wasn't exactly as cool as being a ninja, but it would be kind of cool to be in a play. Due to my stage fright, I had never been in one. If I didn't even have the sir if I didn't even have have to speak to be a tree, it was the perfect role. I didn't think any oh, I didn't think any <laughs> I didn't think another opportunity as perfect like this would come again. So with these totally reasonable and not at all reaching justifications in mind, and not at all really there, I went to class to talk to John. But John wasn't in class that day. It was unusual, but not totally unexpected. John was falling behind with preparations for the play and, and had been working hard. It wouldn't surprise me if he skipped class to build a set or review a cot or the related. So when finally class ended, I headed to the theatre. Intent on accepting John's offer and helping any way I possibly could. Oh no, I know what's gonna happen. He's already gonna have to he's already gonna have a tree cast. I opened the door to the theatre. It was creaking with what I felt like deliberate menace. The light from the open door cascaded through the audience seat and down onto the stage, but nobody came. The house lights were off. Only a few lights dimly lit on the stage. Maybe the drama club didn't meet every day. But it was weird to have those lights left on if nobody was around. I wasn't about to go fiddling in the dark with the stage equipment, though. <laughs> Maybe John was resting in his dorm room. I turned to leave when something made me pause. Oh, was that a sniff? Someone was wondering. Concerned, I stepped down towards the stage. Hello, is anybody here? My voice echoed, bouncing up the walls backstage. There was a slight chill to the air further down I went, and the stillness caused goosebumps to creep up my arms. I heard it again, this time to my right. Hesitantly, I followed the sound. How, 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 
hot, pounding hard enough to shake my vision. A dark form emerged, huddled against the wall. Who are you? What are you doing in here? I took another step closer, closer and my vision adjusted. Oh, it was John, hunched over, something in his hands. His, his face was pale and lined with smudged tears and sweat. Ew. <laughs> it looked like he hadn't moved in hours. John! I rushed to his side as he attempted to stifle his sobs. He reached an arm towards me and I took his hand in mine. Anna, it's terrible. What happened? Are you sick? Are you hurt? With another stifled cry, John shifted. In his lap was a tangled mess of Oh <gasps> No, he didn't say the thing that made him explode, did he? In his lap was a tangled mess of wire bolts. Angry? Realization hit me like a post shattering against the floor. It can't be! Jacques, he's... he's... John stared at the mess in his lap, shaking his head. What happened? John howled, crouching over Jacques' mess of a body. <gasps> Again, and I checked myself to... and it was too soon. John was in too volatile of a state to be really, to re to really be talked to. Instead, I rubbed his back, trying to talk in smooth voice. <laughs> well, it's okay. It'll be okay. He's a robot, so he can be repaired. Hey, women, he can be even worse. Worse comes to worse. <laughs> John continued, shaking his head, completely inconsolable. I had no idea whether Jacques couldn't be fixed or if he was just losing it. Instantly I shifted into caretaker mode. I gently placed a hand on the side of John's head, stilling its near constant shaking and pushed it into my shoulder. Woohoo, honey, you're really getting in there. It'll be okay. We're going to figure something out. It'll be okay. Focus on the sound of my voice, okay? I'm still here. You're still here. It'll be okay. <laughs> oh, that's so weird tonight. I tried to murmur calming things, humming songs and gently rocking him back and forth. This was very sweet, but very weird. Back when I was still living with my father and started having panic attacks, this was what he would do to calm me down. Aww. I squeezed my eyes shut, praying it would work for John too. Eventually John's trembling calmed. He sniffed and he wrapped his, an arm around me, hugging me like a teddy bear. Oh, I wish this was pretty helpful. <laughs> We stayed like that for a while. I didn't know how much time passed, but I eventually lost feeling in my legs. Finally, John spoke. Shock is the most important thing to me. What am I going to do if I don't have him? He has me. I pulled out of our embrace, searching for his face. You'll be alright, John. You're much stronger than you think. Believe me. John swallowed, turning away from me. From somewhere within, he gathered the strength to pull himself together. After another second or two, he sat back on his heels and looked at me. Thanks, Hannah. He was, he was still very, he was still very, he was still very clearly upset, but at least he was coherent. I nodded. Maybe there's a way we can fix him. I'm, I'm not sure, but when I saw him like that, I just, his breathing sped up again. <laughs> and the goodies of hyperventilation. I recognized it from my own experience. I struggled with pain. It's okay. We'll take care of him and see right. I oh, will take care of him and see right. What? We'll take care. Oh, thank gosh. We'll take him and see right now. I don't understand what it is. Let's just focus on that for now. Until we know for sure, let's focus on what's happening right now, okay? <laughs> John nodded solemnly. With a gentle hand, he took off his jacket and turned to Jacques, or what was left of him. He placed everything in his jacket and bundled it all together in his arms. And we had checked that there were no holes, bolts that could have been nodded at me. This is so sad. Poor Jacques. Let's go. Oh. We rushed from the theatre to Bluebell House. Heads, heads down. Oh, heads down to avoid our eye contact with the students. Thankfully, due to the chill in the air and the lack of sun, few students were out. Neither of us were interested in answering the questions that were sure to come once people saw the look on John's face. When we finally made it to Bluebell House, John asked me to fish the keys from his pocket. I did so, ignoring the blush that fought to rise my cheeks, somewhat irritated that even in such a grave circumstance, my heart, my, my mind wanted to other things. Whoa! Whoa, harder. What a sly devil. Finally, I pushed open the door and John rushed in. As I followed, I checked the hallway. Nobody had come, come out of their rooms. We were, as far as I could tell, safe. John went, to, John went straight to his desk in the back of the room, where a small metallic contraption 
was attached to his computer. Seeing as it was Jacques' size, I assumed that's where he slept or charged. I sat on the couch trying hard not to make a sound. John was, for the moment, not utterly consumed by his grief. I was terrified that something I said or did would break the spell. Thankfully, PBG was nowhere to be found. More than likely, he was on the field, practicing for Asagao's first game against Hatterfall. Hato, Hato, Ball, Hatterfall. Hi. John placed Jacques remains on his desk and unwrapped his jacket, moving painstakingly slow, slowly so as not to alter the positions of the wires and gears more than they had already been. I want to know how he broke, like did he say the phrase or something? When he finally finished, he put on his jacket without seeming to realise what he was doing. Those jackets were more like their second skins, it seemed. As John paused to survey the damage, I peered over his shoulder at the tangled mess. Jacques' head and paws were still visible, sort of. Some of his feathers were burned off. Oh my gosh, along with chips and the internal wiring. Wires were cut and the edges blunted. Something that looked like a microchip had had a dent in it. One of his wings was completely detached from his body. This is a nightmare. John turned to me and I hesitantly shook my head. I don't really know anything about robotics. John wiped his face with his hands, pushing his skin up towards his hairline. I know a bit, but not enough to fix this. I don't know what I'm going to do. Where did you buy him? You could probably take him back and make him fix it. Jacques was made by a monk who lives in the techno technological empire on a mountaintop in Tibet. Or at least he did. He's dead now. I still get updates through that guy's grandchildren. They update the operating system for him because it was easier to figure out than how some old man managed to make both a fully functional AI and a robotic bird shell and stick the two together. You see. What were they going to do? Oh, what were we going to do? It was a question I didn't need to ask. John's head was shaking once again. Some kind of compulsive movement. He must he must have not even realised was happening. He didn't say anything. I'd never lost a pet. My father and I couldn't afford pets. Not on his salary alone. But I knew a lot about grief. The echoing pain of a sudden absence. absence. The absence of someone who was always there for you. The sudden feeling of living in a world with no safe harbour, in a world where only you could look after yourself. I laid a hand on John's shoulder. Do you want to be alone? The edges of John's lips raised and what must have counted as a smile, given the circumstances. I'm feeling really sad. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. He sat down in his desk chair and became still as a rock. Before I left, I grabbed a blanket sitting on what I assumed was John's bunk and draped it around his shoulder. I had a feeling he'd be like that for a while. As I approached the door, John stirred from his river. Rever yeah. Please don't tell anyone about this, Hannah. Please. I nodded. He turned back to his desk. I crept out of the room, shutting the door gently behind me. PBG would come back from practice eventually, and he would find John there. PBG had a very calming personality. He'd be able to handle things. He'd be able to help. A little. At least to keep watch over John. I think I'm gonna leave it there. It's very sad with this one. Poor John. Poor Jacques. It can't end here. It can't end like that. Surely. Surely Jacques must appear again. Oh. Okay. Oh.